Okay, now let's make our page more attractive. And first let's delete all these image copies that we did to test the layout. I used, uh, I selected the first one and then I shift clicked on the last one to select all of them. And then we just click on um, delete button or also here on this icon. Okay, so now we are back to the six images. So first uh, we can add a beautiful image to the top part of the page. Let's find something uh, with our Unsplash photo browser. Let's try with this one. So we can set a custom size also. So this should be a bit bigger because we it will stretch through the whole width of the page. And let's grab the custom size and let's take it on the top inside like at the beginning of the body element. And again it goes out of the grid because uh, we have to tell the image, we have to size it to fit into the available space like, like we did for gallery images. So let's create a, a rule. We'll call this a poster. It's like poster image. So I, I type dot poster. And yes, add class poster to the selected element and click on create. So we go here, we say, oh, you should be 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels high to fill all the available space. And now we can't see the image because the available space is automatically sized. So then it ends up being zero. So just as a helper, let's put a minimum width and minimum height so that we can see the image. Okay, there it is. And again, we use object fit to ensure that the image keeps correct proportions even if it is resized. So let's uh, set it to cover. And then let's place the image within the grid, so with these resize handles. We'll place it so that it covers the top part of the layout. Uh, let me show you something. Like now, just just for uh, to make the a point, let's put the image at the bottom because maybe it's not the most important thing on the page, right? So why should it be in the top? But now it covers our title. And uh, so we could put it back at the beginning and then the title is again visible, uh, but better solution is to use uh, Z index or CSS to push the, the poster image into the background. You see now the, the title is visible again. And we also need to change the color of the heading, uh, also make it bigger. So let's select the H1 element and let's create a rule for it, so H1. So let's go to text and we'll make it white. Let's also make it bigger, okay, 60 pixels. Okay, let's take a look at the grid on the body element to see the structure. And we see that the header and content and sidebar and footer, they're all nicely placed with named areas. But uh, our poster image is placed uh, with coordinates, like with rows and columns. So if we would change the layout, if we would add more rows or more columns or delete some, then the placement of the poster would be messed up. So using these coordinates is not the best uh, way to place elements. So, but can we use named areas? 
and unfortunately not because named areas cannot overlap and you know the image would take up this area so it would intersect with the header area but again CSS grid has an answer for this so instead of naming the area we can name the lines here in the grid editor we can click on a line to edit its name let's call them poster lines and the first one will be poster dash start and we can see the line here now and the last line will be poster end dash end and uh, and note that the start and end, like explained here, have special meaning for CSS grid. So we have to use it in this form. So the poster, that's up to us, how, how we call it. But then the beginning should be dash start and the end should be dash end. So now we have, this is the beginning of the poster and this is the end of the poster and let's do the same for horizontal lines for row lines so this will be poster dash start and let's put here a line called poster dash end so now let's uh, just notch our poster a bit in place and you will see instead of numbers we now have poster 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 and if we look at the grid area attribute it is poster no not uh, one two three anymore but we are using the name so in a way grid named areas can overlap if they are defined by named lines not having them overlap is just the limitation of the grid template areas property. So, you know, when we type the name, then this, these areas are um, encoded into this uh, CSS property. So the format of this property doesn't allow us to declare more than one name for the grid cell. But if we use named lines, then these lines are encoded into grid template columns and grid template rows attributes. There we have this option. Uh, we could even we can even give two names to a line. So let's just separate them by space. Uh, we won't need them here, but I, I just mention it. it. Might can be useful somewhere. Okay, so now everything on our, in our layout is uh, placed with names. And now we have a lot of flexibility when it comes to changing the grid. And let's add more rows to the grid to have more uh, like creative opportunity. So let's try to add one more row here. Okay, let's make it empty. So let's remove the header and content and now the poster ends uh, here so you know now with these extra lines we we have a nice way to experiment with our layout to make it more attractive to increase the spacing so maybe what we could do like uh, already we see that the content is going um, it kind of on top of the poster because in this area here is the poster end and content peaks into the poster uh, we can actually take advantage of this uh, it might look nice so let's try let's select the main and we have to give it some background so that we can see it So let's go here to background, white, let's make it white, ok, 
again, we also need some padding. So let's go up where the padding control is. And let's put maybe 20 pixels on top. 20. Let's put 10 on top and 20 on the sides. I think it looks quite good. And let's hide the visual helper so that we see the page. It's not bad. Okay, but now here you see we have our sidebar is here. And if we take a look at the layout, it's up here also on the poster. So let's just remove this to push it down into this area. And this looks better. And then what else? So like now the edge of, of this text, of this content is not aligned with the footer text. Uh, we can solve this with, and I will switch back on the visual helper so that we can see the selected element. So we can solve this by adding uh, a border on the live on the left edge of the content area so let's make it maybe two pixels and now let's hide again the the visual helper so that we can see the border okay and we can like take the color from the image Actually, I don't like this image very much. So let's select it and let's go back to our insert photos from Unsplash. And let's look for another one. So maybe this one. So we right click and we say replace image. Or maybe this one. This is nicer. Okay, let's go back. And let's do a bit of spacing adjustment in the grid. A bit less space on the top. And less space here. And also we have quite big gap that creates additional spacing everywhere. So what we are doing now, we're just playing around with, with the layout and uh, the grid is very nice. So let's also on the left and right side, make equal spacing. So CSS grid, it's very nice tool, you know, when it comes to being creative and just playing around, experimenting with different options, it gives us a lot of freedom to easily like try new things and see what happens. Uh, let's do a bit of text styling. So on the body, let's uh, use a different font. Add Google font. Maybe Lata, I like it. Add, close, okay, and also let's correct the line spacing, something like that, and then the border, we took the color from the previous image, but now we changed the image, so let's update the color, we can do it here, and pick one from this image. Okay, and let's deselect everything so that we see just the page. And let's make the title a bit bigger. And we have enough space. Okay, and let's hide the user interface with this. And now we can just see the, like what we did, our layout. You know, for 
we did it very quickly and it's not bad. It's a good starting point. And uh, let's also add shadow to the text. Text shadow to pixels and we have to set the color. Let's make black and I'm transparent. And just a bit of blur. Just so that we can more easily see the white on the image background. Okay, and there it is. Our example page. It looks nicer now. And uh, still to come, we have to make this layout uh, responsive. So if, if we go down and we display it on small screens, that it also works. So we will have to create like alternative grid layout for uh, smaller device sizes. And another thing, we have to make sure that our page is usable also in browsers that don't support CSS grid. And at the moment, um, if I switch CSS grid support off in this page view, this is what I get. It's not so nice, right? It's not necessary that the page will look the same in, in older browsers, but at least it should be readable and usable. And again, PineGrow helps us to do that as well. So, but for now, this is our page and uh, we used a lot of useful grid features to get to this point.